George Edward Pickett, a major general during the American Civil War, who is best remembered for leading the futile and bloody Confederate offensive on the third day at the Battle of Gettysburg. Hi, I'm Chase Smith, I'm 16 years old, and today I'll be speaking to you about George Edward Pickett. He was born January 16, 1825, in his grandfather's shop in Richmond, Virginia. He was the first of eight children to Robert and Mary Pickett. In the 1840s, he studied law with his uncle, Andrew Johnston, in Quincy, Illinois, and after that, he moved on to West Point. He was a popular cadet at West Point. He was mischievous, a player of pranks, a man of abilities, but he belonged to a cadet set that had no ambition for class standings or studying. He persisted on working off enough demerits to graduate, ranking last out of 59 students in the class of 1846. He soon gained national recognition in the Mexican-American War, where he received a brevet promotion for climbing a pepperet at the Battle of Chupet. He married Sally Harrison Manet, the great-grandniece of Pre President William Henry Harrison, but she and their baby died during childbirth in 1851. He later would remarry with Virginia teenager Lassie Celia Corbell, or Sally, she insisted that she met him at age nine, but they didn't get married till 1863. The couple had two children, George Edward Pickett Jr. and David Corbell Pickett. Pickett made a very colorful general. He rode a sleek back charger named Old Black and wore a blue keepy styled cap with buff gloves and an immaculately tailored uniform with double rows of gold buttons going up the sleeves and the center of the jacket. He had shiny gold spurs and highly polished boots, and he held an elegant riding crop, whether walking or riding. His mustache drooped gracefully beyond the corner of his mouth and turned upward at the end, and his hair was the talk of the army, long ringlets flowing loosely over his shoulders, giving the scent of Araby. He was severely wounded in the Battle of Gaines Mill in 1862 and was an unable to rejoin his men until September. He was promoted to Major General the month after his return, and his division saw light duty in the Battle of Fredericksburg. Gettysburg, Pickett's most famous campaign. Gettysburg lasted July 1 through 3, 1863, but Pickett's forces didn't get there till July 3rd. They missed the first two days of heavy fighting, Therefore, General Robert E. Lee decided that Pickett's division would launch the main attack on July 3rd. After a barrage of preliminary cannon fire, Pickett's division advanced toward Union High Ground on Cemetery Ridge, which proved to be a disaster. The charge failed, but Pickett's men were forced to withdraw after being mowed down by heavy cannon and musket fire. Pickett's division suffered staggering casualties, and he lost over 50% of his men and all of his commanders. After the battle, Lee asked Pickett, What's your division like, per se? And he responded, Generally, I have no division. February 1864, he was ordered to capture North Bern, New North Carolina, and his assault failed to take the town, which included attacks from both land and sea. In the aftermath of the battle, Pickett ordered the hanging of 22 former Confederate troops that had switched their alliance to the Union, and this, invest this caused for an investigation of war crimes at the end of the Civil War. Pickett was reunited with his wife and son in Richmond, Virginia, where they fled to Canada upon learning he was being investigated for war crimes. He returned home in 1866 after a letter of support came from General Ulysses S. Grant, a former classmate of Pickett's at West Point, and he chose to spend the later years of his life as a farmer and insurance agent in Norfolk, Virginia. June 23, 1874, Congress passed House Resolution Act 3086, an act to remove the political disabilities of George E. Pickett, and he was granted a full pardon a year before his death. He died July 30, 1875, at the age of 50, and he's buried in Hollywood Cemetery, Richmond, Virginia.